with maintaining its stable outlook on the UK life insurance sector. I'm Yvette Hessen for AMVEST TV and I'm joined by Tony Silverman, Associate Director of Analytics, to talk through the rationale for that outlook. So we've maintained this outlook that we had in place since 2018 for the UK life sector. Why is that? Well, the UK life sector has uh, actually quite a positive uh, outlook for its two main products, which is uh, annuities and bulk annuities and uh, the defined contribution uh, pension market. But that is offset by uh, the narrowness of the active product range. The UK life sector used to be involved with non-pension savings in the form of investment bonds with, with profit product, but now it's focused really on the pension segment and the degree of fragility to that business model. And then there's the, regu the regulatory risk that goes with that and pensions regulation is something which is uh, subject to political influence and, and, and can be a factor. And finally we do think that uh, it is uh, the likelihood of increased investment risk going forward from here. Uh, we also should mention uh, Brexit related factors and there is, uh, looking forward, some risk to the uh, equivalent status under Solvency II. Uh, for those insurers that operate across the EU28, uh, there's, they'll have to handle um, the questions around the fungibility of capital across all those markets now. Uh, and there are Brexit-related investment risks. Uh, on, on the other hand, there are problematic aspects of Solvency too, which could perhaps be uh, tackled on a UK-specific basis uh, after Brexit, if that's the way we go. You mentioned there that product range is quite narrow with regards to the UK life sector. We published a report rationalising why we're putting this outlook on the UK life sector. And we also talked there about there is some evolution with regards to products and some changes relating to distribution. Can you summarise that briefly? Yes, well, this is very true because uh, given how the product range has, has evolved, the UK life sector for those most important products is essentially in a business-to-business -business marketing environment. And this does diminish the company's retail presence compared to the days when it was much more involved with, the, uh, with selling with profit products and investment bonds. Uh, nevertheless, the companies are still maintaining uh, a retail presence. Uh, largely, this is uh, they're, tr they're doing this through the uh, digital space. Uh, and in the uh, more straightforward protection market, there's a, a retail presence as well. But the overall picture is a, uh, that the companies are, are now principally operating in a, in a business to business marketing environment. Uh, the, the, the other uh, product change, which perhaps one should mention, is that uh, uh, in the annuities market there's the uh, potential emergence of so-called pension super funds which in principle uh, are a uh, alternative product to the uh, bulk annuity but the the likely impact of that on the bulk annuity market we think is uh, certainly as we see it at the moment would be very limited. Can I drill into a bit more detail about the defined contribution market? What kind of trends are you noticing there? Well, the defined contribution market is subject to strong growth and there are sort of forces at work there which are very much supporting that. Uh, the, the alternative, if you like, the defined benefit uh, pension funds have been on the decline in, in terms of uh, numbers for a long time which means that the accumulation phase is principally in the defined contribution market and that's where insurers uh, are, are involved. And also the contributions to the compulsory workplace pensions, uh, the minimum contributions, are going up quite substantially uh, in the next couple of months. So that uh, does support a, a strong outlook for defined contributions. And, and, and the other principal thing that's going on there uh, is the continued move towards passive investment strategies and the consequent uh, pressure on fees, in fact, for fee earnings for insurers. As you mentioned, though, defined benefits have been out of vogue now for quite a long time. But what kind of impact is it having and what kind of relationship is it having with UK life insurers? 
Well, the point where the insurers are involved with the defined benefit uh, pension market is pensions risk transfer, the bulk annuity uh, product principally for, uh, principally for pensions in payment. And that has equally some uh, strong positive uh, outlook in terms of uh, sales uh, at the moment. And one of the reasons for that is the tailing off in longevity improvements. Uh, in this country over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and, and that has and that very much enhanced the funding of UK defined benefit pension funds. Uh, there has been some extensive coverage of pension fund deficits, and, you know, uh, which means that they're less likely to be able to afford a bulk annuity. That effect has much diminished. And the other thing that's going on is that uh, insurers in this low interest environment which also means that defined benefit pension funds are essentially invested in low return uh, 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 assets. The insurers are investing in infrastructure to a degree and, and prudently investing in other illiquid assets offering a higher return. And those higher returns are creeping into uh, the pricing of the bulk annuity product, which again makes it more attractive to uh, pension fund sponsors. A copy of AM Best Market Segment Outlook on the UK life insurance sector can be found on ambest.com. For AM Best TV, I'm Yvette Essam.